In three, two, one. All right, here we are once again. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Get Busy. Thanks once again for joining us this week. Today's show, as always, is going to be epic with our guest, Jenny Lynn Carson. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I want to give a shout out to our Dream Team, Dream Team panelists this week and welcome Kit back. Hey, Kit. Hi. How's it going? I'm good. My teeth hasn't fallen yet, so I'm glad. <laughs> that is awesome, Kit. Teeth are great. Yes. They are I can even up. brush them. <laughs> hey, Christine. Good morning. Morning, Jim. Morning, everyone. How are you? How's it going? Going great. Sipping on my tea and looking forward to the discussion. Me too. Me and the tea. All about it. Hey, uh, Kristen, good morning. How's it going? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? What What's the good word for the day? Mm, um, reciprocity. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that word is too big for me in the morning. <laughs> it was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> Let's do a psychoanalysis of, uh, of Kristen, like reciprocity being the first thing. <laughs> Mind, what the heck is that all about? <laughs> I think we've got Manny in the audience. He could do it later. <laughs> oh, awesome. Cool. So, okay, so hey guys, um, welcome again to Get Busy. Super excited to have Jenny Lynn Carson with us. You know, last week uh, we, were, we were blessed to have Dustin Stout on the show. We talked with him about branding like a boss. And Dustin regaled us with his story about growing up out east and making the move out here to SoCal. Woohoo, SoCal, go SoCal. Um, he also told us about his compelling story about converting to Christianity, maintaining his faith as he built his business. Um, and he spilled the beans on a new WordPress plugin that he's developing with Nick Cardo. And I'm chomping at the bit to get my hands on that because I remember having a conversation probably about three or four months ago with Nick about this uh, WordPress, WordPress plugin, social media uh, plugin that they were developing. And I thought it was cool back then. I guess they've added some more bells and whistles to it and we'll hopefully be rolling it out soon. So anyways, uh, with all of that said, this week we're heading back to the East Coast, to Harlem in New York City, uh, to chat with Jenny Lynn Carson. And Jenny Lin is the founder and editor-in-chief of, I love this, Yoga Dork. So we're going to find out all about that, and we're going to dork out over some yoga culture. Um, she's got a new, it's a new site with a sense of humor um, as well. Oh, and, uh, yeah, whatever. She's got a, a <laughs> news website that's called Salted. Scarlet Tree, so we're going to find out all about that as well. Um, she's also partnered up with with her um, partner in life and partner in business, J.T. Liss, who's an otter, artist, a teacher, and he uses his artwork to support grassroots organizations, creating positive social change, and he also works for the New York City Department of Education's Violence Prevention and After School Enrichment Program. Wow. So you guys have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, Jenny Lynn. Welcome. Welcome to our show. How's it going this morning? Uh, it's going great. It's going great. I'm so happy to be on the show and I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of it. So thanks for inviting me. Uh, well, you know what? We are, we're happy to have you here with us on the show and um, we're ready to kick it with you. All so right. tell us. Yeah. Tell us, um, let's start, you know what, on the show we always like to focus first on the person, the guest, and kind of learn a little bit about who you are and what motivates you to do um, what you do. So my first question to you is, where did you grow up and what were some of your biggest influences as you were growing up? Um, well, I grew up in New Jersey uh, on the shore. Um, I used to not be able to explain it too well to people, but it's basically where MTV's Jersey Shore show took place. Um, <laughs> but now it gets a little bit easier. Unfortunately, it's not a great reference. Um, but it's, uh, it's 
it's a small town it's called Bayville, and it's right across the bay from Seaside, which is where that show was uh, was filmed. Um, and uh, you know, it's beach town, uh, so I mean, my influences, I, I I guess, would be my my parents, probably number one. Um, and you know, I've always kind of been a writer and a communicator, which is funny because I'm also very um, more of an introspective person. So I'm not like the loudest person in the room. Um, so there's kind of a lot going on in here before um, before I speak, um, usually. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I, I actually I came to New York uh, for college. And that was when my life sort of just really opened up. And I knew that this was the place that uh, was my real home. And um, there's just so much culture and just so much to learn here. And I really just fell in love with the city. and. Um, so I've been here ever since, <laughs> and it's just, I mean, the, the, the life of the city and just the, the pulse of the city just really fuels my, um, my, uh, motivation and then creativity and, um, just sort of, uh, I kind of thrive on that, the way that everything sort of works together and everyone, even though they keep to themselves, they're still, um, Still eager to help other people out if they are in need. Um, so there's a lot of support there. It seems like a cold city, but it's really not. Um, and that's part of why I love it. Um, and there's always cool stuff going on. So, um, and I'm hoping that Task Bar is one of the cool things that will be going on in East Harlem um, in the next, uh, you know, as it keeps growing. And um, so, you know, it's been it's been great, kind of doing my own thing out in the, in this uh, great city. So. Hey, that's great, Jenny Lynn. First of all, I want, I want you to feel totally comfortable because I think you're on a panel full of introverts. I think we're all in that same space. <laughs> 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 hey, okay, so we've already got comments from the, from the uh, peanut gallery from our dream audience. So your Yoga Dork oh, wow. is one of the greatest names ever. Decades from now, I'll wake up at 3 a.m. and go, Yoga Dork, yay, awesome. Wow, that's fun to say, Yoga Dork. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, Jenny Lynn, I told you that this, that name was like stuck in my head as soon as I heard it. Yeah. It's seriously stuck in my head as well. <laughs> <laughs> cool, yeah. I mean, I actually, people ask me how I came up with it, and I don't even remember because I was, I mean, I was, this was maybe seven years ago, um, and so I was just playing around with the idea of starting a blog that was kind of like a, a watchdog sense, um, or like a news and culture site just reporting on what's going on in the yoga world, not like a personal site, because there are a lot of um, more introspective um, personal sites that are introverted um, in a sense of more like self-reflection in yoga, and I just wanted to start this kind of... Um, newsy site that wasn't about me, but it was about what was going on as yoga was growing more popular. Um, and I think just Yoga Dork, I don't know, I just, <laughs> it just seemed to click and it was like, that's it, that's the name. So I'm glad you like it. I'm glad it's a catchy one. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's totally catchy. And for all the geeks, dorks, and nerds like me who are out there, I mean, we can totally relate to Yoga Dork, even if we can't necessarily <laughs> relate to yoga can sure relate to that. So right. um, it, it seems, Jenny Lynn, that you infuse a lot of humor into what it is that you do. And typically, I mean, it's not, to me anyways, it's not typical to have that fusion of yoga and humor because many, I can't, I can't say all, but living out here in California, it seems like um, the yoga culture or the yoga people tend to be a little bit uptight. So tell me a little bit about your vision for infusing yoga with humor and, and actually almost all of your websites have a, a touch of humor to them. And to me that's really refreshing. So maybe tell us a little bit about um, your inspiration for that. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I think just I, I come from a, a, an angle here and <laughs> My mom is kind of the quiet one, but she is um, very big on puns, so she is sort of the pun master. And um, my dad is just a total goofball, and 
um, you know, he really makes an impression on people when they first meet him, and he talks to strangers. He's very like out outgoing, and I think just humor was just part of it was just part of my my family life growing up, and you know, there's like sarcasm and there's there's tongue in a lot of tongue in cheek um, stuff, and so I I think just in my writing in general, I I think I like to infuse some humor because it's you know I especially yoga too because I did see that it was taken so seriously and I just in my practice and in my experience like it wasn't that serious like life doesn't need to be that serious all the time um, so I felt that that was really something that people could connect to and something that was maybe missing and um, in the uh, conversation that was going on online and um, within the yoga community so it just really it, and it was it just made it more fun <laughs> So I mean, I like to have fun while I'm while I'm doing my work. So um, that's pretty much why it was. It just it just felt natural to me to be kind of funny about it. Um, so and then I realized, you know, as I started the blog, that uh, people were gravitating towards that and, and enjoying that. So that just kind of helped to, um, you know, push me a little further and and actually have me like, you know, focus and and do it every day. So. That uh, that was gratifying uh, at first. So, I actually I was temping at the time. So I'll tell you the story if you want to know um, how I got it. And I started it after I did my future training, and then um, I was temping for a while because I was not teaching yoga and I had quit a corporate job before I was um, before I did my training. And so I decided that I would temp for a while and see what I find along the way. And I had some interesting experiences temping. Um, oh, please and I had just a lot of time sitting in a desk. What's that? Please share one of those interesting experiences. Oh, well, I temped at a lot of... I tapped at um, Alexander Wang. I temped at um, you know, the fashion, high fashion label, data entry, basically. Um, I was... I temped at WWE offices. Um, I got some nice swag from that. <laughs> um, T-shirts and things. Um, a attempt at um, uh, Wells Fargo, actually. I was working there just a few months. I was there actually longer than I was supposed to be there. Um, and right when the stock market crashed, uh, that was interesting because I was in the investment banking department working with um, uh, directors, which was a little intense um, at the time. Of course, I wasn't invested in it, um, but that was actually where I was able to um, spend some time during the day and just write. And I would take all day long to write one single post, and it was like so hard to do. Um, but over time, it actually helped my brain uh, start to form um, the way to, to write like that. So I start writing posts in my head before I would uh, start typing them out. So, I mean, it just it just interesting offices and and cultures that like I never would have seen otherwise. So, I you know don't I wouldn't knock temping. It's actually a very interesting experience, um, and you know you gather some some cool. Uh, well, I don't know if I use cool, <laughs> but you gather some. Interesting um, experiences, and uh, you know, you learn a little bit about yourself when you're working amongst a, another group of people, kind of doing their thing. So, yeah, it was a good time. Awesome. Hey, so I want to throw it open to the panel. Um, do any of you guys have any questions so far for Jenny Lynn? Oh, we have something here. Yeah, I actually, Christine yeah. actually highlighted this comment that I, I also like. She says, um, I love how she keeps referring to, it just felt natural to me. I think that's passion, I mean, to say. I mean, passion, when you're really passionate about something, it just feels right. It fits. Because, and I think, I always say this, but I think your passion always has a way, you know, has a way of finding you, ultimately. You know, you can hmm. get lost, you know, in, in you know the roads of life, but you're gonna come back to the place where you were always meant to be. 
you know, as a as somebody who likes to write myself, I can completely relate to that. Yeah, that. Yep, yeah, I agree. Um, so, Chris, <clears throat> Christine or Kristen, any comments or questions from you guys? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to piggyback on on Kit and and Cheryl. I tapping into our creative flow. I I, I believe that many people don't believe they're creative, but I believe that we are all creative, just in different ways. And I believe that our passion and our purpose is found within that creativity. So I am totally loving you, Jenny Lynn, for, for you know, what you're doing with Yoga Dork. Love the name, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but more importantly, your, your, your story. I love that you're following your passion and your creativity and not just keeping it to yourself, but allowing other creatives and people who think they're non-creative um, to have an outlet. I love it. Yeah, and I think, like you were talking about how um, in, in California, you've noticed that only uptight, you know, those who do yoga seem to be uptight. So I think this infusing humor into something that's considered uptight is, is a fantastic way of introducing yoga to more people and to make it more accessible, you know. So I think that's quite a stroke of genius, I would say. <laughs> And all of you uptight yoga people out there, send all of your emails directly to Kit, okay? <laughs> I'm kind so, of an uptight yoga person, so. <laughs> so we have one on the panel, great. <laughs> I'll be sending you a whole bunch of emails. <laughs> do, not, do not send them to fiercej at gmail.com. Send them to whatever Kit email addresses. I'm sure it's out there on the web somewhere. I'm sure she'll appreciate all of those emails. <laughs> so, so, so Jenny Lynn, I find it also kind of fascinating that you're a birth doula. So tell us about how, how that came about. And I don't know if you have any interesting stories to share about that, but that's kind of fascinating to me. Yeah, I'm... Well, if you're not familiar with what a birth doula is, it's not like a um, medical profession. It's actually um, informational and emotional support um, for the moms and for um, partners. Um, and so, I mean, actually, it was sort of through yoga that that happened. I did a, a second training, um, which is, uh, you know, the standard is like a 200-hour training first, and then you do a 300-hour to follow the sort of, I call it like a more professional program, um, and I actually, I mean, I'm, I sort of ties in with my um, my nerdiness about um, sort of women's bodies. Like I've always been very interested in um, women culture as well, um, which is why I started the other site with a friend of mine, the Salted Scarlet Tree. Um, but I just, I mean, I'm kind of like a cycle nerd. Um, and so when I was when I was younger, uh, especially, and so um, a friend of mine uh, introduced me to it and said, you know, I think you really love this um, because she and I had a project together as part of our training that would be like yoga, a yoga program designed for like teenage girls um, to kind of boost um, boost confidence and self esteem and things like that and kind of give them a better sense of their bodies. And um, that is sort of like still in my brain to maybe do someday, but that was a, just a project for training. Um, but we, uh, you know, worked together, and she's like, you know, I really, I discovered this doula thing, and I think you'd really like it. And so she went with it and um, shared some of her experiences, which is, I mean, really, um, I did my training, and it's, it's really an amazing experience. Basically, I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit intense because, um, as you might imagine, that birth is uh, a little intense. But it's um, being in doula, you have to be on call 24/7 at around 37 weeks. That's kind of right when that uh, things could happen and that uh, baby could be born. So you know, it's a little bit difficult to plan that out. Um, just unless you're, you know, you don't make any plans and. Uh, you know, you can have backups to help you, uh, backup doulas and things. But basically, you know, you're there for the support of the mom. 
and um, and you get to experience a baby being born, which is pretty just magical and amazing, and uh, such an honor to be a part of um, someone else's like incredible day. You know, maybe like one of the best days of their life. So, um, and I just, I mean, I got into it a few years ago, and I I haven't been to you know too many births, less than ten. Um, so, but it's uh, it's been an amazing experience, and I I have kind of taken some time off of it um, because of all of these other things that I feel like my babies are birthing, like taskbar <laughs> and um, salted garlic tree, and so I've got a uh, yeah, <laughs> so I've, <laughs> I've had my own little babies to to nurture, um, but you know I've kind of kept in touch with it and I've been an advocate for uh, for birth doulas, and um, I'm also a prenatal yoga teacher. Um, in my spare time, so, um, so I like to do that as well and kind of keep in touch with that world, um, and uh, you know, kind of just be supportive. Um, but I might have another. I might have a, a baby uh, attend a birth in December, so that's probably my next one coming up. Wow. So, so wh what if as a as a doula, what are some of the most important things that you do to support the mother as she's giving birth? Like, what what is it? that you do that um, makes what you do so special to the mom? Um, well, really just being attentive and being, um, you know, we, we meet prior to, um, you know, everything going down. Uh, so that there's sort of, there's some coping techniques that I know that she will be um, uh, wanting to try or something like massage or you help the partner kind of give them a massage you kind of are just there at support you're um, constantly there um, things like sneaking in little bits of food or like um, uh, like a vitamin water or something like that like a little bit of uh, sugar to kind of get the electrolytes keep going even though they sometimes they tell you not to have any of that stuff in the in the hospital, we kind of sneak it in, um, and uh, I mean, there's a lot like getting, making sure the mom gets up and kind of walks around, and if they can, you know, if they don't have epidural, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get too far into like the, uh, you know, I'm not sure if you're fully, um, you know, aware of what everything like epidural and all that stuff, but. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically just attending to the needs of the mom, making sure she's breathing, just be there to support and kind of coach, kind of like a like a birth coach in a way. Nice. Um, oh, that's so yeah. cool. So to jump to sort of a sort of related topic, but not completely related. <laughs> so the whole salted scarletry. I love the name of that. How did that all come about? And what is salted scarlet? Scarlet's I can't even say. It. It's really hard Yoga to say. Dwarf. No. Work, I can say all day, but salted scarletry, yeah, not so much. So tell us yeah. about that, how that came about. You can just call it salted. We call it salted. Um, <laughs> well, it actually, it started with a, a very dear friend of mine who I've known since, actually, since middle school. Um, he lives in the city, and he and I have been friends for since that long, which I don't I can't even count the figure. Um, and, uh, you know, we just sort of jived on on idea of starting a site that would be about women's issues and, and stuff going on uh, in the world. And he's a male, um, but he's been very kind of connected to uh, the feminine and um, he is very close with his mom and kind of, you know, really supportive. Like, he's I think he's one of his quotes was, "I was born a man, um, but I I live my life as a feminist or something like that." I don't know exactly <laughs> what he said, but but he's basically you know like he's a, he's a really great guy and he's really funny and he's like definitely on the humor you know point as well. Um, and so we really wanted to start a site that um, kind of brought a little bit more humor to the to things going on because there's just, there's just so much, and I've always, I've always wanted to do a women's site, and sometimes I get a little bit like, um, because um, I talk about things that are like a little bit very like um, motivated to kind of support causes and things like that, and then he kind of comes in and 
he has a, a post that's about like what the Golden Girls would say, like <laughs> in response to certain things going on in the news. Uh, and it's really funny, and it's just like it just he totally learned that it's like oh yeah, it's it's very you know we can, we can be silly. Um, so I mean it's a really good balance because I'm kind of the earth to his fire, in a sense. Um, so it's uh, we balance each other out, but. Yeah, it's it's been that we launched the site last um, last fall, and um, the idea here is to actually have a lot more contributors and different voices come in and um, and share their perspectives on things going on in the world. Um, and also, we do a section called uh, Salted Spotlights, and it's each week we spotlight um, different women out in the world doing cool things, and um, we've had. Uh, comedians, we've had PR uh, people, we've had, um, what else, people that have started their own businesses, kind of entrepreneurs in different fields, um, we've had like all kinds of different, uh, I'm, I'm interviewing a um, yoga studio owner that's in Harlem, um, so kind of really trying to like give uh, these, these people that maybe wouldn't have um, a spotlight on them otherwise can give them the attention and, and appreciation for what they're doing and um, so that's kind of something that I really uh, feel connected to and it's part of what we're actually going to be doing with Taskbar as well um, highlighting people that are um, you know within members of Taskbar doing great things but also kind of people out in the community um, just giving them a little um, uh, attention and um, kind of a, can't think of the right word, but um, appreciation basically for what you know what they're doing, and and so that other people can learn uh, about what they're doing and maybe use that as uh, inspiration or motivation for their own projects. So um, we'll be doing that pretty soon, hopefully starting like an fall. Yeah, very cool, Jen. As the only guy on this panel, I'm going to throw it out to the, <laughs> the awesome and amazing women that we have here. I'm going to let them take over for a little bit because I just think it's appropriate. So, Kit, take it away. I don't know. What I really find in as we're talking is thinking about the common theme that runs through all your business models. I mean, you talk about humor, you talk about community, motivation. You talk about, you know, inspiring people to be the best versions of themselves, and I think that's mm -hmm. just amazing. And I have to ask you though, because I've been um, shying away from yoga because the general, I, I think it's a myth. The general myth that's prevalent is that you need to be perfect in order to do yoga. That is, you need the perfect yeah. poses. There's too much focus on the postures and the gestures, you know. And I mean, how what what would be your advice for someone like me, who I have battled an eating disorder in my life, so I can really relate to, you know, when you're talking about how you're trying to develop a better body image for girls during your training camps and all that, so how would you recommend that I start, you know, um, including yoga as part of, like, a daily regimen? What would be your advice? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough because we are, you know, we live in a world where, um, celebrity culture and kind of like you, it's like the Kim Kardashian thing like spreads across every <laughs> everything so it's like I feel even yoga is is a, a victim of that in a sense but I feel like there's a movement that's growing that's trying to combat that a little bit and challenge the way that um, yoga is represented right now and um, I would say, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you have studios close to you, but I would just, unfortunately, you just have to try out different places and see where you feel comfortable, and you, you'd be surprised when you show up how many different types of people are in there. Um, usually, at, you know, if you're going to take a yoga class at a gym, like maybe you would have more gym type people in there that are all kind of fit bodied and whatever, um, but maybe not. You know, it's really you just have to. Um, forget about all of that, you know, trying to be a certain shape or a certain size, and 
you know, find the teacher in the studio that's right for you. Um, luckily, there's there really is, like, within the yoga community, what I've seen online over the past, like, year or two is just this really great, um, just this movement to uh, be accessible and to be welcoming for every type of person. Um, there's um, lots of, I mean, I have a friend, um, Anna Guest Jelly, who has Kirby Yoga. She's, she's opening a studio in Tennessee, Nashville. Um, that's welcoming to, you know, fuller figured um, people. And then there's uh, actually I just posted yesterday about a, a, it's a hashtag, but it's also a um, it's also a Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. But it's called um, Real Yoga Selfie Project. Yes, I read and, that on your website. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's about, you know, it's, it's kind of, it is challenging what the face of yoga is and being like, well, you know, you can do all these fancy poses and you can share, um, but then, um, you know, maybe these other these other images will um, show to other people, like, like, you get that, you know, it's like, well, I don't have to be this you know, really thin, modely type <laughs> in yoga, like I can just be who I am and be okay with that and just enjoy the practice for it's, you know, calming and relaxing or um, sort of fine-tuning um, of the senses um, and just enjoy that. So it's hard to overcome those images and everything, but I think that there's um, this, this is other fighting force that's helping to beat that a little bit. So hopefully more people will be inclined to do it. Yeah, I like I like the um, iPhone yoga that you talked about on your website. Where you just tear oh. the you just tear the iPhone and you lose yourself in the iPhone. So that's the kind of yoga I do, but nothing more. <laughs> meditation. Yeah. I thought that was such a funny uh, a funny definition because yeah. you, know, you think it's going to be like selfies, and it's just like don't. <laughs> it's, just, like, it's actually a word in the Urban Dictionary, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. I love yoga. Um, I've got something on this um, because I I do practice yoga and I have for years, um, and I've I have friends of all shapes and sizes that do it as well because in modern dance, you know, you're gonna find all different shapes and sizes. It's all beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's all the human body human form. Um, and what I've been fortunate to find is instructors who have really told us to focus on the breath, focus mm -hmm. on your spiritual journey. And it is a, your individual journey that you're on in yoga. You're there, you're on the mat, you're doing the work. And it doesn't matter about anyone else when you're in the zone. You're in your yoga zone. So that's what I would encourage you to do, is just take that spiritual aspect of it and, and make your focus put your focus there. Yeah, totally agree. And that's, you know, it's it's great that there are people like you <laughs> that kind of like remind people of that too. You know, I'm sure your friends are, are happy that they feel comfortable um, probably talking to you about it too. Um, but yeah, I think it's, and it really, I mean, yoga is such a great tool for, for so many things. Um, and it's actually, I mean, we offer it at a task bar as well as a, um, as a way to sort of you know kind of go in and um, have a little bit of a meditation for a while so that you can tap into some creativity um, or maybe just sort of just let go of like all your to do's and things like that so that you're able to come back and focus on work after you know a practice so it's really I mean um, yeah, it's not really doing about fan about doing fancy poses. It's really about kind of taking that time for yourself and just being like she said, like on your own on your own journey. Um, so it's really, I mean, hopefully that's that's getting out there as much as like the you know yoga journal covers like that, where it's you know <laughs> and like Instagram where everyone's like doing these crazy poses. So. Yeah. But so, so I guess what you're saying is it's not really about the body, it's more about the, um, you know, losing yourself in the moment and just experiencing that moment more than mm -hmm. anything else. And that kind of leads to, I, I love um, Carmen's comment here. She says, 
Um, <clears throat> I found that yoga gives me much better posture, balance, tranquility, and mental organization. I didn't mm. go looking for it, but I love it. I love that comment because well, it seems like... Yeah, and I don't think it's so much that you lose yourself, it's that you find yourself. You find yeah. yourself in those moments of stillness. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, deep. I found... I'm sorry, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. I love it when, when we go deep. Hey, so I, I want to um, carry the conversation on into Taskbar. So what, what I love about yoga, and I've only done it once or twice, but it really did, the couple of times that I did it, uh, it really did put it bring me to a much stiller, much calmer, much quieter place. And I think one of the main reasons, especially from a business perspective, that people would want to do that is to tap into their creativity. You know, get more into the creative zone and bring that creativity into your business. So I want to kind of segue into that and Jenny Lynn, maybe have you tell us a little bit about Taskbar, what Taskbar is and why you that's another one of your babies that you birthed. So tell us about that, <laughs> um, about the whole thing and the, the purpose, the mission, the vision for Taskbar. Oh, okay. Well, you know, obviously, um, you know, working on Yoga Dark, I work on a computer a lot, um, and uh, you know, I, I work from home mostly. And but you know, when you're working from home, it's it's sort of you get distracted. There's so many things that um, you could do otherwise, and you kind of you know you lose your motivation sometimes. And so, um, and my partner. Um, JT also he is an artist. Um, he's also he does after school uh, programs, uh, teaching as well. But he and I would he works on the computer as well because he's a photographic artist and he uses images and sort of layers them um, and he uses the computer for that. And so we would be heading down to a cafe in the West Village to kind of the scene and we would go there and it would. I mean, this was the best place to go. It was like large open space. Usually, like we could find a seat kind of close by to one another, um, and they didn't care that you were there all day long. Uh, and we would spend like eight hours there. We'd go on a Saturday and like close the place. Um, and it was great because we could, you know, do that. Um, but over time, we kind of got tired of traveling. It was like 45 minutes to get all the way down there. Um, and we would uh, spend money on like food and um, and coffee and stuff, and it just kind of got to us. And we're like coming home one night, and we're just like, why, you know, why isn't there something like this in our neighborhood? That would be so cool if there was something like this in our neighborhood. And we do have cafes, um, but the cafes close kind of early, um, and you know, there's Starbucks, but we don't even have a Starbucks near us, and like. There, it's just it's such high traffic in there, and you don't always get a seat. And then when you have to go to the bathroom, it's like this whole process. So, we um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a pain, and it's expensive. I mean, a coffee is like you know four bucks. So we were like, well, why don't? And this was like two years ago. So we we're like, well, why don't we start something in our in our neighborhood? Like this would be great. Like we want to connect with the community. We want to like reach out and have this be a space like a home for people, home away from home to do work like us. And so we uh, we started the idea and it just it just flowed out of us. It just became like this um, like like a baby. We just kind of came this other being and um, we just got so excited about it and started, you know, creating ideas and building out our whole our whole plan. And then a friend of ours was like, you know, you have some space in your apartment. I have kind of like a lofted space, and they were like, "Why don't you just start it in your apartment and see what happens?" And so we were like, "Yeah, great idea. Why don't we start that?" So that started the whole process of like transforming our downstairs into um, into a co-working space, and it just kind of launched from there. That was you know uh, early spring last year, and then we built it all out and launched it in the summer um, and had, you know, uh, a big party to kind of, we had, uh, it was kind of cruising for a little while. And then last year it was, um, like, the holidays kind of came and it was, like, 
you know, started snowing, and I don't know if you guys were paying attention to New York last uh, winter, but it was like the worst snow, like uh, relentless for like um, weeks and months. And so we just sort of, you know, we let it go for a while because it wasn't anything that we were, you know, wasn't we were paying extra rent for anything, and um. And then, you know, in the spring, we just really kind of, we came back together, regrouped, and decided to launch it again uh, with some uh, events this summer. But the whole idea with Taskbar is that we wanted to create this space that other uh, freelancers, creative professionals, anyone that works from home, even if it's like one day a week, can come and be in a supportive environment surrounded by other um, people doing their thing, like like really uh, driven to do their thing. Because what we found, what I love about cafe culture, is that you're doing your own thing, but you're part of this collective. And everything, you know, it's almost like a larger organism that you're a part of. And um, I mean, we wanted to take that and sort of um, upgrade it a little bit to where you know the people maybe a little bit um, and you work in the space where you can feed off each other's energy and really kind of um, use that to get up to the next you know make make progress in your own project and then we you know we thought of the workshop ideas um, and we're going to be launching something that is uh, once we have more I mean we're, we're growing so once we have more members and we have sort of a flow we want to have these members host workshops within share their expertise in whatever um, whatever category, whatever um, uh, area of, of work that they're into, so that they can kind of, you know, give their maybe they know how to do use WordPress really well or something, or maybe they know how to use um, Google Plus really well, and they want to give like. Uh, uh, so we have like really, we have really big, uh, lofty ideas for this as well. Um, reaching out to uh, students in the neighborhood as well, and uh, maybe ending up doing like a mentorship program. Um, but we're starting small. We're in our we're in our apartment space, um, and you know we can't fit a ton of people in here. Um, so we're starting. Uh, we probably could fit about you know eight people um, comfortably seated that way so have desks set up. And so that's kind of, you know, the idea for now is just to get it going um, and then be able to uh, launch those other ideas and those projects uh, down the road so that um, the task bar grows out of this space and into, um, you know, uh, into the community and out into a bigger uh, venue. So. I mean, really, just uh, by he's a. I want to call him my boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. He's my fiance. We're engaged. Um, <laughs> it's such a weird word. <laughs> but um, but he uh, he has a social work background, so he's he's very um, and he, like his his work. He donates money back to different charities and different organizations. He's very committed to using what he's doing to give back to the community as well. Um, and so we're about that too. We really want to bring people in, have them share, you know, what they can offer and then kind of give that back to the community, whether it's donating to charities or giving back to the youth in the community like by mentoring um, some high school kids, um, college prep, that sort of idea. So we're really kind of, you know, we're excited to do that too. So we really just want to <coughs> support um, other creative ideas, other creative people, and um, in whatever industry. I mean, we've got people that are actors and, and stuff too. So that, um, you know, it's really just an all-around um, supportive and uh, nurturing environment for them. So that's the best part. <laughs> in the long-winded um, description, so you know, I think I think Christine and I and Kristen too, I would guess, are ready to move to Harlem because we're <laughs> loving this idea. <laughs> I am like, I'm gonna this chair and go to Harlem. <laughs> 
you know, because as an introvert myself, I, I'm not very comfortable um, in a group setting, okay? But your idea just seems to fit how you talk about, you know, you're working by yourself, but you're part of this higher collective. I think I love the way you phrased that. So you, you, you feel that you belong. You're, you're alone, but you're not lonely. So I think that's, I think you brought it out beautifully. So please come to Chicago or something. And, <laughs> and start task bar, start task bar in Chicago. Yes. <laughs> spread the love, spread the love to Chicago, right? Yeah, there's a lot of snow here too, so it's not going to be very different. And we realize, I mean, we're not the first people to be doing. <laughs> yeah, it, it there's a lot of snow in Chicago. More, more snow in Chicago. Yeah, definitely. But you know, I, I don't think any idea is truly original. I think ideas we, you know, we learn and grow from people, and that's how we repurpose other ideas to create your own original spin. You, you know, you add your own original spin to it. So I think every idea is unique on its own. So I, I don't think that, you know, I think this is something I've never heard of something like this at all. So for me, this is a very unique idea. <laughs> oh. yeah, I, I've heard of co co-working I think it's called where you have those communal spaces for entrepreneurs who work at home but to, to insert the creativity piece that's what's exciting for me because Jim touched on this before when we tap into that creativity that's where our ideas are that's where the answers are and, and doing it in a collaboration type of environment that is phenomenal so Jenny Lynn I don't know if you have a cot <laughs> I'm just putting out my plea as a fellow creative, just sponsor me. I'll come to Harlem. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, seeing a road trip, I'm seeing a road trip to Harlem this fall. Um, I don't know how much space you have, but it would be one great way to get the whole Get Busy crew together in one location. Yeah, we're all moving in. <laughs> well, yeah. even if it's for the weekend, you know. <laughs> Well, I have, a, I have a great, I have a huge beanbag couch. Yeah. <laughs> I have a huge oversized beanbag. You could fit at least two people. Hey, hey, I've told Cheryl Deuce that I would come sleep in her bathtub, so why not? Nice. <laughs> oh, bathtubs are really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But I really like this comment. I think all of us can agree that um, I like the fact that Janelyn is a doer, not just a dreamer. That's my biggest um, problem. I dream a lot. I don't do much. <laughs> well, you have to be a dreamer first. Yeah, so I have one half taken care of. I just have to focus on the second half. And yoga is going to help me. I like the discussion that's going on in the comments. Um, you know, you talked, Christine, I really loved your comment. You said, even if you're just breathing, there is energy, there's movement in your body. And... I thought that was beautiful. So mm. that gives me some hope. So I can just go outside today. I'm just gonna go outside and just sit with my own thoughts for a few minutes, and hopefully that will help me, you know, uh, get reorganized. So. All right. Hey, Jenny Lynn. Yeah. Um, what what are can, are there some particular projects that are going on in Taskbar that you can tell us about? Um. Well, we have. I mean, we have this. Um, comedy night coming up on Thursday, and that's we've been that's been in the works um, for a little while, and it's it's a workshop slash performance. So the workshop is an improv slash comedy writing workshop where um, this great uh, friend of ours, she's been teaching improv and leading improv for like the past twenty years in the city, um, and she's coming to kind of facilitate this and help people kind of tap into their funny bone a little bit. And improv is like one of those things that terrifies me. <laughs> um, but it's uh, I think it's a really, really good tool um, for people that are writers especially, <clears throat> or people who are speakers, um, or people who are just kind of like um, running a business that need to kind of tap into that um, quick and, and it's not even, uh, you know, and she kind of, she she reminded me that it's really not even about wit, it's about um, this, this exercising that muscle in your brain basically to um, be able to think fast and it's, it's, it's such a beneficial thing. And so that's, uh, that's happening first and then there's a performance 
by some really great um, and hilarious uh, female comedians in the city. So it's uh, it's a uh, four different um, women. Well, it's an improv opener and three different women performing stand up who are just hilarious and amazing. Um, and I'm like, I can't believe they're like coming to do the show. It's like <laughs> it's really awesome. Um, and so the whole idea is to, you know, have a fun night, but also the workshop is about, um, you know, it's kind of what we want to do, do different things that are um, interesting and maybe kind of help people with creativity and give them that experience um, that might be able to crack something open or, you know, kind of uh, or just, or just be a fun time. So uh, we have that, and then we have... Um, that's this Thursday, the 31st, and we have um, an artist talk coming up. We have a, a great, um, he's a writer, um, he does a lot of poetry, so he's coming to talk about his work. Um, that is um, August 22nd, I want to say. Um, and so things like that, we want to um, invite people to come and speak about how they do their job, similar to what you do with... Um, with your Get Busy show in a way, you know, because have people come and, and share their experiences um, so that, like, other people will be inspired and kind of um, learn about uh, different people and in in different careers and the way that they do their job. So um, that's kind of what we, you know, that's, that's what we've got kind of lined up. We're going to plan some stuff for the fall. So we don't have really a schedule yet for the fall but we're, we're working on it, so. Hey, Jenny Lynn, I'm going to put you on the spot, and you don't have to answer on live TV broadcast throughout the whole <laughs> world here, but I would love to throw out there the opportunity for Get Busy to partner with Taskbar and maybe bring to the world some of the things that you're doing in, in your, uh, at Taskbar, something like the improv comedy. That would be so huge on Google Plus as, a, as an HOA. So I'm going to throw out there to the world the opportunity for us to partner together on some of these things and we can decide you know, exactly how that would work. But uh, what, what does my Get Busy uh, Dream Team crew think about that? <laughs> Putting you on the spot too. <laughs> yeah. You spoke my mind. I right was actually on. just I just was about to, I was about to tell Jane Lynn that you know you could easily take your task bar onto the hangout scene yeah. and connect with a more global audience. So I think this is a great way to do it. Cool. I'm all in. Anything to do with task bar, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are too Right. We we can we can start virtually and then work our way there and work our way over there in real life. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll make it out to your neck of necks of the woods as well. I mean, I'd love to. I love Chicago, I love LA, and you know, I love where. where someone in Virginia? Where else is everyone? Arizona. <laughs> Arizona. Cool. Oh. <laughs> hey, but we've got Sedona. Yes, beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Christine, you're near DC, right? Yes, I'm closest, so you come here first. Okay. <laughs> Probably <laughs> just a train ride away, right? National yep. tour. Yeah, it's actually it's not too far. It's a few not hours. Too far. Yeah. <laughs> cool. No, I'd love to, I'd love to do that. I mean, it sounds like um, you know, it's totally like I said, like you know, we're we're we want to feature people doing great things too, and it's um, totally like what we, what you guys are doing. So, um, I mean, I wish. I don't know if we could set that up for this Thursday, but um, I'd love to do that, you know, to, to share it out to the Hangout world. Right. Like, well, what would that be called if you traveled around? Like, would it call be, like, the yoga dork train? <laughs> <laughs> I, have done, I have done road trips as yoga dork, actually, before. In, uh, a few years ago, in the summer, took this crazy road trip on the west coast actually up and down the coast and um, it was it was like 5,000 miles in like 10 days or something like that it was like this ridiculous up and down but it was wonderful we stopped in different yoga studios and we went to um, a yoga festival um, and 
somehow made it down to the Grand Canyon and back up again. It was like this crazy road trip. So it's, <laughs> so it's been done before. Do it again. <laughs> yoga Dork. Did you say the Yoga, yoga Dork? Yoga Dork Express. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> hey, that takes the Orient Express to like a whole different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey guys, so but believe it or not, we're uh, we're running down to the end of the show. So I'd like to, as we always do, I'd like to have to go to each one of the panelists on the show. And this has been awesome, Jenny Lynn. And I really hope that we can partner in some way because bringing what you're doing to the world is would be epic. So let's see how we can make that happen and turn it into a win-win. And maybe, you know, give some of your artists, your creatives, the opportunity to, you know, tell the world about what it is that they do. So we'll we'll definitely make that happen some somehow, some way. You know, the get busy crew makes stuff happen. So anyways, um, Christine, we'll start with you. So comments, thoughts? as we're closing out the show? Just um, Jenny Lynn, just God bless you for what you're doing for creatives. As a fellow creative, this is completely energizing for me. The conversation is amazing. It's a pleasure to meet you and I'm, I will be meeting you offline. So, All right. yeah. <laughs> and thanks, thanks Jim and Kid for having me as well. Oh, you're, you know what, Christine, you're always welcome. You're always welcome. Thank you. you bring a bright you. sunshine to the show. Every I love, time. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kristen, comments, thoughts? Yeah. Okay. So, I know that your website is not finished yet, but I have to give you a huge compliment. Or at least I think it's a huge compliment. Um, I've been on the on the prowl to find a website that has like all these features that I want. And when I came across yours, I was like, this is it. This is it. This is how I want to do mine. Because the way that you combine all your different interests, like the doula, like everything, that's just, I mean, because I have, I'm varied interests as well, but like you just did it like so well. And so, yeah, so uh, when it gets up and running, like, like even more so, I mean, there's already fabulous stuff on there. So everyone go on there and check it out. Um, and that's, that's what I'm gonna say. Ah, oh, thanks. I can send you. I can send you what little skin I used for the. Ooh. I'll send you that. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you the details. <laughs> thanks. Cool. Okay, so Kit. Well, I think we're all gold crushing right now. At least I am, big time. So, uh, gentlemen, you're you're awesome. It's, you know, I think I have two hashtags for today. One is pay it forward, which is what you do. And two is just breathe. That is Kristen's. Yeah. Inspired by Kristen's comments. So, you know, thank you so much, all of you, for really making, you know, my ten o'clock to eleven o'clock hour every Tuesday so memorable. I love you all so much. Well, there's so much love going on, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so great. I told you, you know what? Jenny Lim was kind of nervous. I, I did the show prep with her last night, and she's never done a hangout like on air Ooh. like this before, ever, yeah. right? Um, no, we've, we've, we've had the opportunity to do that with a lot of different people. And I told her, you know what, Jenny Lynn, just relax. Our crew is <laughs> awesome. We'll make you, you know, feel totally at home. And it was, it was okay, right? Yeah, totally. You know, he let me know. He's like, no, really, they're wonderful people like don't be worried so you totally you know made me feel welcome and at home so I really appreciate it and feel supported so it's, it's awesome to have you know a lot all these other um, females and males uh, <laughs> doing wonderful <laughs> things out there and um, you know I really I, I'm so grateful and so appreciative that uh, you know I got to be a part of this and um, you know, we'll we'll thank we'll thank Chelsea Clinton someday, Jim. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, and you know why? You know why we're gonna thank Chelsea Clinton viewers because Jenny Lynn and I met at South by Southwest in the Chelsea Clinton um, discussion presentation, right? Yeah, 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 and that that was pretty epic. And then shortly after that, we found out that um, she was pregnant. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. 
little is gonna be a little Chelsea or whomever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. A little mini yeah. me running around. Um, oh, I I do have one more thing to say. Can I, Jim? Yeah. Yes. Don't use words like reciprocity before I have my second cup of coffee, please. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Hey. Um, so you know what? It's been another great episode, Jenny Lim. We're gonna chat with you a little bit in the green room and talk uh, about how we can possibly partner in some form or fashion. Um, get busy, dream audience. Seen a lot of comments uh, in the stream, so as always, thank you guys so much for um, tuning in. Hold on, we'll close out with this. So, yeah. Carmen, this event was epic. Christine, Kurt, Kristen, Kritika, wow, it's too many Chris's. <laughs> um, thank you so much for inviting Jenny Lynn, absolutely wonderful. This was a short hour full, wonderful dream team and dream audience. Aw, thank you, so, Carmen. Yeah, thank you, Carmen. Um, so with that said, we will see you guys next week. And I think um, after next week, I'm going to take a little one-week vacation. Um, but we will, be, we will be, be with you. Get busy. We'll be with you next week. Then we'll take a week off, and then we're going to hit it again, hit it hard after that. So... Thank you, Dream Audience. Take care, and we will talk to you next week. Ugh.